getting real estate in Vegas. I am Bridget Magnus, and this is the Vegas Video Network. Vegas Video Network. Well, if you've got a question, a problem, or a suggestion for us, do be sure to send that in either via our live chat or via email. That's getting real at VegasVideoNetwork.com. By our toll-free listener hotline, that is 866-966-4599. Or perhaps you prefer to um, do the live chat that I already mentioned. Boy, I'm clever today. So, um, you could be watching us on the Vegas Video Network, uh, but we do also thank those of you who are watching via iTunes, YouTube, Roku, and those of you listening on Friday nights to KSHP AM 1400. So before my tongue gets tied any further into knots, let's go ahead and get the Friday Fingers underway. Yeah, and don't forget the live chat, okay? <laughs> so then, uh, right now, excuse me, as of this morning, our official MLS system told us that there were 13,754 available listings. That is down somewhat from last week, and it is a drop of 9% from this time last year. The median price on houses did rise, that's right, I did say rise, to $136,000. Unfortunately, that is still down 10% from last year. Sorry, it's the truth. The uh, median price on condos and townhomes was steady at $65,000. That is down only 8% from last year. Um, by the way, I would like to uh, point out that that condo median price is up from a month ago, just for free. It's a good thing. We do have, out of that total number of available, 3,082 foreclosed properties with a median price of 105000 That's a change of less than 1% from last year, but it is down sharply from last month. Short sales represent 6,152 of our available units. That's down 14% from last year, which is a great thing. Median price is 110. We also have 4,523 traditional sales, non-distressed. That's down 8% from last year, but the median price is steady at 179. Sold in the last 30 days, 4,045 properties. That's up 19% from last year and represents another truly banner year uh, in the making here. We haven't had a year this good since the, the big bad boom times when people were falling all over themselves to buy houses as fast as they could. Um, and the median sales price on those properties was 105000 Median list price was $110,000. Um, those are down, of course, from last year. I hope you didn't expect otherwise. We do also have 13,464 properties that are under contract to be purchased. That is down only 1% year over year. But the important thing is that the number of those that are uh, short sales is down 11%. This is a huge sign of progress, and I'm enthusiastic about it. No, I still don't think we're going to be able to clear all of them up in 90 days. But there's progress, and I'm willing to you know, at least give that a thumbs up. Rentals up over 5,000. We've got 5,073 available right now at a median price of 1,100. And we do have 2,395 new leases at 1,150 median price. So we're finally getting to the point where we have just over a two month supply of rentals, which is really more of a healthy rental market than we normally have. Rentals still move fast, so if you're trying to rent something, don't delay. But you don't have to, you know, panic right now and, and fill out your application right this very minute necessarily. So then let's get on with some news. Um, the foreclosure starts for August are up month over month, but they are down over year over year. Um, part of this is the fact that Bank of America is ramping up their foreclosure pipeline after they had a bunch of trouble work with paper. Trouble work with papers. How about paperwork troubles last year? This is going to be a terrific tongue twister day, folks. Stay with me. Um, I do expect, um, because it's going to take some time to process all of these foreclosures. So after the first of the year, I do expect the a number of foreclosed homes that we have available to go up. You heard it here first. I know, it's common sense. You still heard it here first. Um, last bit of news I've got is that 60.4% of Nevada homeowners are underwater. No, this is not a sign of flash flooding. It means that they owe on their mortgages more than their homes are worth. So we are going to have short sales and foreclosures in Nevada for the foreseeable future. 
Now today, I would like to talk about something boring and exciting all at once. The official legalese term for it is called due diligence. Most of you know it as the inspection period. You, it, it, it's a period of time that is specified in your purchase contract, usually about 10 days, where you get to go over everything and make sure that what you are buying is what you thought you were buying. So we do call it the inspection period because the first thing that starts off is inspections. As you probably guessed, inspections are one of the two things that the uh, buyer has to worry about. The most important inspection is the home inspection. If you are purchasing a, a home with a VA or an FHA mortgage, you are probably also going to have a pest inspection or a, what they call a wood destroying organisms inspection. Basically, they're checking for termites, carpenter ants, all of this sort of thing. If they happen to find cockroaches, sure, they'll tell you about it, but it's not really what they're most interested in at that time. Now, depending on what your home inspector finds out, you may also find out that you need a mold inspection, a roof inspection. Depending on what sort of things are on the property, you may also need a well inspection, a septic tank inspection, a fireplace inspection, and all sorts of other things. But like I say, it, you only have to inspect it if it exists. No point in, in uh, doing a septic tank inspection on a house that's hooked up to city sewer, is there? Didn't think so. So then the other thing that the buyer has to worry about is the HOA resale package. Now just to make double sure you know this, in the state of Nevada, the seller is required by law to pay for this and make sure that you get a chance to look at it. It is going to include things like what they call the CCNRs, the bylaws. These are basically all the rules that you're going to have to live with if you go ahead and move into this property. Um, you'll also see information on your assessments, what you'll have to pay, information on their collections policy, their newsletter, their budget, their minutes of their last meeting, um, their reserve study. That's basically what they have put aside for big things that have to be done periodically. Um, in a condo association, for example, that would include roof repairs and exterior painting. In most communities, it would include things like making sure that a block wall around the property is maintained properly. Um, let's see, what else is going, going to include? It is going to include current information and information about any lawsuits that the HOA is involved in. Uh, I don't know if you've been following the news, but this is definitely something to keep track of in Nevada as there are actual court cases involving fraud by HOA uh, um, Officers, I guess that's what you'd call it. Um, even managers got duped on this one, so it is worth paying double attention to all of those things in that lovely packet. Now, there are some other things that your mortgage professional is going to have to worry about. The first of them is the appraisal. Um, now, depending on what kind of mortgage you get, the ten, that's going to result in what kind of uh, an appraisal you get. FHA or VA do have rules that are more strict than for conventional lending, but I find that over the last couple of years, many conventional lenders are holding properties to the same standards as FHA, so be aware of this. Now, as a result of the appraisal, your lender may require the seller to make certain repairs. This is above and beyond anything that you may have asked the seller to repair as a result of your inspection. The other thing that your mortgage officer is going to worry about is your final mortgage qualification. Now, you already had a pre-qualification, but now what they're going to do is make extra sure that all that financial information is still good. So, don't quit your day job. Don't. Um, make sure you do not make any cash payments. If you do make, deposit pretty much anything into the bank uh, beyond your paycheck, make sure you hold on to that check stub in case somebody asks about it because they will. Um, also, do not open a bunch of credit accounts. I know that you want to open that account at Home Depot so that you can buy new appliances, but don't do it until you close. Now, finally, there's going to be stuff that your title officer worries about, and that is primarily going to be title search. 
Now, what that means is that there's going to be someone who goes through all of the um, county records regarding your potential new property, make sure there's no outstanding liens, find out if the HOA is owed any money, find out about any easements or any other limits on your use of the property, inform you what's going on as a result of all of that stuff, and make sure that anybody who's actually owed any money gets what they have coming with them so that you have what is called marketable title after sale. Marketable title means exactly what you think it is, the ability to turn around and sell that property at a later date. So then, do you like my pink shirt? I love the color pink, but I don't like it so much in the context of this week's What Were They Thinking? Dun, 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 dun. Ah, yes. Who doesn't love great colors? And as we've been telling people who are renting for years and years, one of the great benefits of owning your own home is that you can paint it any color you want, both inside and out. It is possible to take this principle a little too far. Yes, it is a pink house in a lovely residential neighborhood. You can't miss it. It's the pink house on Smith Street. Um, I don't know what to say about this other than if you're going to paint your house an interesting color, you'd better plan on living in it until the day you die. Um, this house is, is a lovely color on the outside. In the last week, I have seen a house that was egregiously painted on the inside, including an orange bedroom, a red bathroom, including the ceiling, uh, a blue bedroom, and seafoam door green, uh, uh, green doors, including door frames, all through the house. I know you want to paint that your own colors and, and you know, really take ownership of, of the way the home looks, but think twice about what's going to happen to that property later. Let's take a quick break for some station identification and come back with some real advice. This is David Ivey from Pub Crawl. It's funny because this is David from you should, you should, No, you should just leave it on. Hi, I'm David Ivey from Pub Crawl, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And scene. All right, today on Real Advice, we are going to talk about listing errors. Now, I'm not talking about ex some listing agent accidentally putting that there's a mug room instead of a mud room, or a car porked, pork instead of a car port. I'm talking about much more serious things than a little typographical error. Um, these things can cost sellers a lot of money. They can cost sellers potential showings of perfect buyers for their home but they can be an unexpected bonus for buyers if you pay attention. So the first thing I got to say is count the rooms. Now, why do you want to count the rooms? Well, you want to make sure that there are the right number there. Um, is there a den that isn't mentioned in the listing? I almost got stung by one recently. I was working on a listing and wrote in all of the information from the official tax records, went to go put in all of my pictures. I said, okay, here's a picture of the master bedroom. Here's a picture of the second bedroom. Here's a picture of a third bedroom. Oh, what's this a picture of? I forgot about the den. I should go back and measure that and put the dimensions in there because there are a lot of people who would very much like to have three bedrooms plus a den, people who are otherwise only considering four bedroom homes. If I hadn't gone and put that in, there's many people who would not have even bothered to look at the listing. Sometimes you'll find a situation where there's a family room and a, a, a living room, and then there's this mystery third space, a loft or yet another living room. What's that about? So look carefully, try to figure out what is what and um, what those measurements are actually measuring. Um, my other example about this is that sometimes a bedroom is not a bedroom. I find that this is especially a problem on uh, listings that are six bedroom or more. For example, I know of one that is listed as a six bedroom, but the sixth bedroom is actually open to the hallway and there's not a door. You wouldn't necessarily want to put the kid's bed up there. It's not really going to work very well, is it? The other thing I want you to look for and be careful about both when you are listing your home and when you are looking at a home is undocumented features. 
Well, what the heck is an undocumented feature, Bridget? It's the often overlooked little things. Sometimes the current occupant doesn't use it. Sometimes, particularly on bank-owned properties, they just didn't notice it when they were putting the listing together. Things like um, barbecue stubs. Things like uh, recent upgrades, um, say the water heater was replaced last year, or it's a 50-year-old house, but somebody went back and put in low-flow toilets. All of these are little things to kind of pay attention to. Are there upgraded blinds? Are there, is the fireplace nicer than what you expected? Is there a, college, a, a garage workbench that maybe isn't noted in the listing? There also may be some storage on that property that there just isn't room to put it down in the listing. So always be careful to explore everything. Now speaking of exploring everything, uh, look out every window. Well, what on earth do you mean by that, Bridget? Why do I want to look out the windows? I'm not gonna live outside, I'm gonna live inside. Oh, well, you'd be surprised. You might have a pleasant surprise, like a view of the mountains or the strip that nobody bothered to put in the listing. True story, my most recent close has a view of red rocks out one window and a partial strip view out of a, a two other windows, but nobody ever bothered to mention it in the listing, so people who are looking for homes with views never came to look. On the other hand, my buyer got a bonus. Now, on the other hand, sometimes there are unpleasant surprises. I was recently in a listing where I looked out of the uh, master bedroom to see that the neighbor behind had a junkyard in his backyard. Oh, that's elegant. Like, I really want to look at junk cars every time I go to look out of my master bedroom window. So look out every darn window. That's all I've got to say about that. So I would like to thank everybody for tuning in today. If you've got questions, problems, or suggestions, be sure to send them by email to gettingreal at vegasvideonetwork.com. Go ahead with the uh, toll-free listener hotline at 866-966-4599 to get my personal contact information so you can ask me your question or go ahead and get the full version of the Friday Figures. Check out bridgetmagnus.com. In the meantime, it's the beginning of fall. Drive safely. Don't drive into water too deep to see the bottom. See you next time.